I absolutely was not nervous about applying with natural hair. The hairstyle that I had was um, a curly afro that just kind of was neatly done and um, representative of my personality. I wouldn't say that I was nervous about having my hair natural uh, on the day of my interview because I had seen people who worked at the library who had their hair natural already. Um, so I wasn't so nervous about that. I was just more nervous about making sure that it looked good. Um, and on the day of my interview, my hair was just uh, out and flat. Um, I have locks right now. I have braids in them for protective styling, uh, but I just had them out and I made sure they looked really neat. Um, no, I wasn't because at first I wasn't natural when I first started out with this job. Um, now, yes, I would um, be aware. I wouldn't be nervous. Um, it'd, be, it'd be in the back of my head. So um, the hairstyle that I probably right now I have a pull back. This is the hairstyle that I wore uh, when I um, interviewed. As I went up, uh, interviewed for different positions, this is the hairstyle I would pr probably be wearing right now. Applying to a government job with my hair texture has never really been an issue because it was either curly or naturally straight. When I flat ironed it or blue dry it, um, before I used to just keep it in a bun or straighten it out, and so it was a really an issue. When I did my interview for this current job, however, I had just began doing my locks, so my hair basically looked like it was twisted. The only type of politics I ever really faced with my hair as a male was when I joined the Navy at 18. I was a basketball player, so I grew my hair into the style. It was a high top fade, meaning it was short all the way around, the sides and the back, and I grew the top of my hair straight up for about six inches. I thought it would make me feel taller. Well, as a basketball player. Well, I joined the Navy. And in the Navy, you all seen the movies, you all seen the videos of the recruits getting their hair shaved. So I cut my hair off myself. I didn't want uh, some Navy barber cutting off my hair. So I cut it myself and I cut it short. So, and then they still sat me in the barber chair once I was in boot camp. They still sat me in the chair and they charged me $2.50 <laughs> of my Navy pay to let this barber run the razor over my already cut hair. So it wasn't bald, but it was very, very close. Almost bald. So I was enlisted. That meant I joined the military and had not graduated from college. That's the big difference between enlisted and officers. So I was 19 years old being around mostly white or Caucasian officers. But by that time, after boot camp, by the time I got to my base, it was about nine months later. So I was already growing my hair back to the style and this was in the early 1990s. And so I was already trying to grow my hair back to this high top fade. But I was gonna get it, the regulation said you couldn't have your hair more than three inches above your scalp. There was a African-American barbershop that was within walking distance of my base in Norfolk. And so my barber and I, we knew the regulations. So he would measure it after he would cut my hair. So I got my hair to two and a half inches above my scalp to two and three fourths inches above my scalp. So I always knew that I was on, on the edge, right up to the edge of the line. So there was this captain that was in charge of our administrative assistance office. He was in charge of inspecting the sailors on the ship every day. He would inspect their shaves to make sure they were close. He would inspect their hair. He would inspect their uniforms. Now, if you know anything about the military, you know that the Navy is not as strict about personal grooming as the Marines or the Army. 
or maybe even the Air Force. But this particular captain was on Flagstaff, so that was an important thing. He was working for a vice admiral, and he would try to inspect us as if we were on the ship, and we were on land duty. And so I had a, uh, a lady, a woman supervisor who was enlisted just like me, so she had more contact with African Americans. African Americans in the military, the vast, vast majority of African Americans in the military, they are enlisted. So it got to a point where this captain would be doing little microaggressions. Uh, Petty Officer Smith, that was my title in rank. YN3, so you would go up the ranks, YN3 to YN2 to YN1, and YN1s had the higher rank. And so my direct supervisor for Yeoman, YN was for Yeoman. So my supervisor one day had to pull the captain aside. And I think she told him, this comes off as racially insensitive. This comes off as biased. You, you said that you would take Petty Officer Smith and measure his hair to make sure he was within standards when you're not measuring anyone else's hair. Because the military had regulations for how long Caucasian or white sailors hair could be. It could be to the right to the edge of the hairline and it had to be short and groomed. At the time, like in civilian world, the high top fade for African Americans were in style, but in the military, the younger sailors, Caucasian sailors, would wear pompadours, where it'd be short all the way around and very, very long and high in the front, and they would use mousse or styling gel to hold it up. And so my supervisor kind of, I've heard, overheard her pull this captain to the side and say, this is coming off as racially biased, racially insensitive, because you are not measuring the Caucasian young sailors who have their pompadours and their high, uh, high hairstyles. And so you don't interview to go into the Navy. You join, you go through boot camp, and then you're part of the military. So that was the first time coming into contact with Caucasian or white society where they had the opportunity to judge my hair. I've been natural most of my life, so it was probably a brief moment when I had a relaxer in middle school, actually North Clayton Middle School just around the corner. And since then, I just started wearing my hair natural in a variety of hairstyles. Every few months, there was something new that I was doing with my hair. So it's never been boring, always been fun, and always been a beautiful journey that I've looked forward to expressing and continuing. Oh, I have not always been natural. Um, I permed my hair when I was in the sixth grade and I had it relaxed all the way up until the 10th grade. And then I grew my hair out rather than cutting it and then just began to lock it at that point. I decided to go natural because I saw the condition that my hair was in and it was like falling out, it was shortening, it just wasn't good. So I decided at that point that I wanted to lock it because I still wanted to have versatility with like leaving my hair out. Um, so I decided to lock it. And I had my locks from the time I was 15 all the way up until the time I was 26. Then I cut them all off in June of 2020 regretted it and then in January of 2021 I decided to go to a hairdresser and get some lock extensions. And right now you could see them through the braids um, but I'm using the braids as a protective style to help my hair lock and grow better with the extensions. I have not. What made me go natural? Uh, chemotherapy. <laughs> I, when you're in chemo uh, your, uh, your hair falls out. And um, my hair, I was kept washing my hair. I have thick hair, I've always had thick hair. And it wasn't all the way quite out yet if you wouldn't have known it to look at it. So eventually I just did the big chop, 
chopped it all off and just let it regrow to what it was. Um, when you're in chemo, also your hair comes back different colors. Mine uh, did not come back any color. Mine came up back locked. <laughs> I just like, ooh, I want a new hair color. No, no. Um, uh, my hair came back like twisted, like very like twisted, like almost to like it would it was locking, like dread locking, if I can remember. Um, and I had to put some just for me, some type of smooth baby perm or something to to knock it out. Um, so my hair would. Um, uh, yeah, so I can like deal better, at least comb through it, you know. Uh, so, um, and I've been natural since then. I've been natural my whole life. In middle school or when I was younger, my hair has been long and curly. I unfortunately put in a perm because I wanted it to be straight and less curly and at the time what I thought was wild. Um, recently, I began to lock my hair. Although many people thought that my hair was so-called quote-unquote too nice to lock, I've always liked the idea of having locks and deciding to and I finally decided to do it. I've actually had my hair locked for about two years now. Being natural just means using what I got. <laughs> and being cool with it and being creative with it and experimental with it. So... It's just an exploration of how I'm feeling at the moment and using the challenge and the opportunity of doing it with what I already have. As an African-American man, as I've grown older out of my teen years, I used to have a flat top, a box cut, meaning the hair would be short on all sides and I would grow the hair up as high as I could. I got it as high as maybe six feet on top of my head because I wanted to be taller. I'm over six feet two right now, and I wanted to be even taller to play basketball. So I thought if my hair was taller or longer going up, then I, it would make me feel taller. And being natural, I never got into the jerry curl. I never got into the box curls. Those were the prepackaged uh, hair care products that were in a box and you would get these chemicals that would curl the African American style of hair. And it would curl it and if you had enough activator or hair product in it, then it would be shiny. But if you didn't, it would still be kind of wavy or curly and it would look dry and brittle and it would fall out. So you could get a jerry curl or a process, which we called it, at the barber shop by a professional. Or you could get the box curl in the box at the grocery store or a hair care store and put it in yourself. Men in general, I think, they want something that looks good but that is functional. So if you're an athlete, like I played basketball in high school, you couldn't have the box cut or the jerry curl or process because you had to wash your hair on a constant basis if you were clean. You had to wash your hair because you were constantly playing basketball, you were constantly taking showers, you were constantly in steamy rooms, and we all know as African Americans, soon as your process the steam or rain or water humidity hits your process then it poofs isn't that the curls are not as tight and then it doesn't have the ideal look so as an athlete most men don't have processes don't have s curls or box curls don't have jerry curls so yeah i think it, for men i think in general the choice of being natural meaning very little chemicals uh, not being straight, being as curly as African American hair is, I think it's a more of a functional decision than a political or a style decision. 
Being natural to me means that I get to embrace the part of myself that I didn't like for so long. I was, you know, in this society, I was raised to not like my own hair. Uh, my mom always told me otherwise, but I finally realized it when I was older and it just makes me feel empowered. What being natural means to me is being able, um, being proud of who I am. In high school, you know, my hair was perm, you go get your hair perm, whatever, um, you know, do what you do with it. Um, it's, a, it's a pride thing to be able because not everybody, black hair is so unlike everybody else's hair. It's so different. And you just, it takes a lot to take care. A lot of people don't understand it, but when you wear it out in your natural form and you're proud of who you are and you show them that your hair can look, how your hair can look when it's not permed or when it's not in a certain, you know, a certain style or, or you may not have weave, no offense, or you don't have weave in it, it's just natural, it's just there. And people can see how black hair looks in all shapes and forms when it's not when it's not natural and it's a beautiful thing being natural to me when i was younger wasn't much of a big deal because i always wanted my hair to be something it wasn't naturally as i got older i started to appreciate my natural hair more and got a deeper sense of self-love and to appreciate who i was more it can also be more inexpensive than trying to be what I wanted to be, meaning trying to get washing sets every two weeks or put it in braids or weave. Absolutely, men are included in the natural hair movement. In some ways, they are just leading some of the new styles that we're seeing that they do so well. It's just there's so many different ways that people can show up so embracing um, one's own um, talents and one's own um, God-given creator given attributes to represent one's beauty one's creativity one's uh, style and it's not gender specific so i've seen some great 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 inspirations from from men that are known and unknown so it's really great to see how they show up in their own expressions of how they choose to style their hair i believe that men are definitely included in the natural hair uh, movement i don't think they're as seen as women are uh, because there's more stereotypes concerning hair with women, um, whereas men typically keep their hair short, but they're definitely included in it as well. As we all know, men don't always have their hair short. I do think that we need to attempt to bring men more into the scene to make them more visible. Um, do I consider myself part of the natural hair movement? Um, not really. I don't think the politics for natural hair is as active as it is for women's hair. For men, because uh, men's hair is political. Men's hair is of interest to the mainstream society. But because men's appearance isn't judged as critical as women's appearance of regardless of race i don't think that the natural hair movement has impacted the african and male american male society as much as it's done the african american women's society because men can generally long as it's long as it looks clean or looks cut and looks precise i don't think it matters if a male gets a perm like Prince or Michael Jackson. I don't think it matters if a man keeps it very, very short for brush waves. We call that a Caesar cut like Jay-Z or you would see uh, LeBron or Kobe in his later years after he cut off his afro. Uh, or a man could have uh, braids or locks, especially here in Atlanta, especially here in the South men can have that kind of hairstyle and still be considered professional now 
in the two early uh, 220s in the late 2010s I think men can get away with just about any hairstyle that he would choose but women cannot it's always women are judged on their appearance so those traditions rules and mores that apply to straight hair for women to be accepted in the workforce I don't think those standards are as strict or men are scrutinized the same as women be able to wash and comb through it um, because it reminds me that I have hair to comb through. <laughs> that I, um, you know, because when your hair is not there, uh, you know, it's a reminder that um, I didn't know if it would come back at all. I was just like, Lord, please help, just, just, just help it grow back. So that's the, my favorite part is combing through. Uh, my least favorite part, combing through it. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. I have like Shirley Temple, like ringlets, like, uh, like it, I, 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 like it's coils, kinky, coily, and you have to comb through it. And, um, it's, you know, a hair gets everywhere. It, it's not, it's not, it's not. Caucasian hair, you know, or any other hair, it's because uh, black hair is different. You have to comb, you have to work through, you have to get a good brush, you know, <laughs> because if you, and, um, and what I really like doing is putting the natural shea, the 100% shea butter, because it comes, it comes from Africa, from Ghana, is 100% uh, natural and when you put your hair in it it um, when you put in your hair it makes your hair real soft that's another favorite part of my hair care routine the best part to me is washing my hair I just love 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 getting under the water and just you know enjoying the wash process the least favorite part is the detangling process but I've learned some nice little um, techniques that are now starting to make it something that I'm beginning to enjoy, but it does come with this challenge is because you have to be extremely patient. The best part of my hair routine now would be washing my hair for the simple fact that I love to have my, my hair on my head, you know, submerged into water. And the feeling of my hair being washed is also relaxing. So that would be the most best part of it. And I think my least favorite part of my hair would be having to dry it because I have locks and I have a lot of them. So it takes time. And retwisting it on my own, if I don't have time or the funds to go to who I go to to get it retwisted, would be my least favorite part because it takes forever to retwist my own hair. Best part of my hair care routine is taking the braids out and the worst part is uh, putting them in. It takes a really long time to put them in, almost a whole day, so that's why I keep them in for so long. But wash day is the best. I guess my favorite part of my hair care routine is picking out my hair. Uh, right now, I think my hair is probably at three or four inches above my scalp. You wouldn't know it because I put various uh, hair care products to make it curl. Um, I don't want to name it because we don't have rights. I don't want to get free advertising. But I do put uh, hair grease and some types of uh, hairspray in it. But to pick it out in the mornings before I put the, the hair care products in is probably something satisfying about taking uh, my metal pick and picking out my hair. And then I put the hair care products in for the sheen and to make it curl. And then I use a sponge brush. So basically it's a sponge and it has uh, large holes in it on one side and then it has like a spiky rough end on the other side and so i use this sponge brush to define the curls more 
So I would think picking it out in the morning with the metal pick, and yes, it has a fist on it from the 70s. That's probably my favorite part. My least favorite part of my hair care routine will probably be putting in the hair care products, probably putting in the grease, uh, the hair grease and putting in the hair products because then I have to shape it and it takes me more time than I want. Most men don't want to spend time with a hair care routine. Most men prefer to make it simple and be done with it. Uh, by me having longer hair right now, uh, I have to take at least 10 to 15 minutes to get my hair. I know ladies, I know that's, that's, not, that's not any time compared to your, your hair routine. But for men, if I had a short haircut, or what we call in African American uh, community a Caesar, meaning it's very close to the scalp, and we would want brush waves where it's a wave pattern, we would use a brush and a uh, do-rag to tie it down at night, that would take me five to 10 minutes max. You would get up, uh, wash your hair, well, once you washed it, you would just put the hair care uh, pomade or hair grease in your hair, and you would brush it, and you'd be out in less than 10 minutes. So this 15 to 20 minutes that it takes me to do my hair with the grease and the curling and the picking and all that, the time it takes is probably the least favorite part of my hair routine. If you are thinking of um, doing, going through a natural hair journey or doing the big chop, do it. I mean, we all know perms. I mean, thank goodness for that. I mean, if you're thinking that this is not for me, I don't want to, I just happen to come in through it by happenstance. But if you're thinking of doing the natural hair journey, um, that's something, that's something you definitely should uh, take into research, uh, something you should definitely try. It's going to feel, you're going to feel sort of naked when your hair is chopped off at first, but it's like starting anew and you get it just so many styles out there. You get a chance to regrow and take care of it. And um, I think that's something that you should definitely do and definitely try to look into. It's, it'll be like a new journey for you and your hair. And if it's something that you happen to be forced into, like your hair is, you had to t chop off your hair and start all over again, uh, don't be scared. There's plenty of YouTubes. There's plenty of stuff out there now that wasn't out there when I started out. So it'll be much easier for you. It's something you should definitely do as a pride thing, being proud in your hair of who you are as a natural black woman. I just want to thank uh, my co-workers, Janelle, for even doing something like this. It's just so amazing and beautiful. And for those of you all who are choosing to be natural and go on that journey, congratulations you've got a lot of support and for those of you all who are already there hey